This month, I'm learning from Taylor Sheridan, the writer of Yellowstone and Sicario, to improve my own writing style, following a technique used by Stephen King, Hunter S. Thompson, and William Shakespeare. I'm Carl Seegers. I created the Immersion Screenwriting Method, where we study great scripts in a somewhat unorthodox way. At the end of this video, I'll give you a discount code and a freebie. The secret is to copy and transcribe great scripts and movies. This month, I'm copying the screenplay of Sicario word for word. And if you missed the first day, check out the playlist as each day we build on the previous. Sicario was the first film produced from a screenplay by Taylor Sheridan. By that time, he had already sold Hell or High Water. So technically, Sicario is not a break in script. And this is somewhat important because the draft we're copying is not in all aspects the model to follow. But to me, its style is 100% aspirational. Yesterday, I copied Sicario's opening scene and we made it to the brutal explosion at the end of the raid on the stash house. There will be more deleted scenes and we'll try to figure out why they were cut. Page eight, cut two. The first scene of the day was set uh, at the house of Manuel Diaz. In the film, we don't we see this until the much later. Yeah, so that's Probably because convention. he's a minor character and there's not much currency in setting him up so early. Point of view, so that's More interestingly, Kate's phone call with her mother didn't make <sighs> it into the, the movie either. Again. It was a longer Camera scene divots. and even if it showed an important family relationship, we could do without it. Just I hear too, because it's dialogue. I would the script certainly pushes the boundaries of engagement with the main script. character and someone must could have realized that it went a little too far. This could have been Sheridan himself, the producers, or director of the movie. It doesn't is not matter. Named. What matters is a that is you cannot move away from your main an character an repeatedly without getting punished Manuel at the Diaz. box office. And so not all sure. scenes with Alejandro Transition. had to go until we finally meet with him through Kate's POV. The only exceptions are the few moments with Eliseo and so I would do it like this. Now, you heard me pick up on this description. Macy's body tenses and deflates at the same time, which is physically I don't impossible. remember this scene. Perhaps it suggests um, that things are moving faster than they actually the do. Uh, and that's a great thing for any screenplay. And speaking of cheats... May have been cut. I moved to shift caps lock okay. when I What did we learn? <laughs> um, slug lines, which is... Probably not necessary. The first scene today was set at the habit. house of Manuel uh, Diaz. In the film, up. we don't see this until Process. much later, probably because he's a minor character and there's not much currency in setting him up. The so audio we're going to now, more interestingly, Kate's phone call with her mother well, didn't return. make the movie either. It was a longish scene, and even if it showed an important family relationship, chirps, we could it. do that's the wrong number. You see that detail is so important. If you do it correctly, then it will line up. The formatting exactly. In a dress, you would typically have a comma after tonight, but you know. Is it necessary to have the display say mum if she's already said not tonight, mum? Not sure. Um, here is where I would go against the original, and it's this, yes answers it even if it's action i'll keep it in but let's keep the format correct technically that's not possible tenses and deflates at the same time but we get the point it also suggests the speed at which this action moves everything that gives us the suggestion of fast uh, action or fast progression of the plot is welcome and you see how this bumped it to the ne uh, next page because we put this parenthetical on a separate line. And still not coming back up on the page. Interesting. Why is that? Did I add another line anywhere else? I'm now comparing the number of lines left and right. Oh, can you see that there's a, a larger space here on the left before the interior bathroom moments later? So that's it. That's a dirty trick to reduce your page count. Okay, 
here we go. This could be it. Yes, space before currently has two. I'm gonna make that one. That fixes it. And that brings us to page 10. I'm pleased we did that. We learned something about Final Draft, so you can set your individual element format. And now you see that this keeps us on this page, which suggests that this may be letter format, but I'm not gonna worry about that. Now we can do that later. Uh, I'm going to go back to typing. At the end, I'll give you a list of all my points, but as we continue, see which choices you agree with and which you don't. That's how you develop your style. Now, back to work. Love the mom. It's my birthday, goddammit. It's another scene I don't remember. He does mention the flip-flops or the... What do you call it? Tongs? This is a nice way of saying, are we in trouble? Correct use of the word rises here. Earlier he used it in the transitional, a transitive sense. I don't think that is possible. Oh, let's not focus on the mistakes of others while we make our own. This is one of the few uh, exposition scenes in the movie. Tell Sheridan has said that he is allergic to exposition, so he's very careful on how to include it or introduce it in the film. So there's already tension in the room before this information is shared. We're going to finish this scene and that'll be it for today. And that didn't bump to the next page, so we're going to force it. And that's where we're going to stop for today. Um, good work, we did almost 10 pages. The first scene today was set at the house of Manuel Diaz. In the film, we don't see this until much later. Probably because he's a minor character and there's not much currency in setting him up so early. Now, more interestingly, Kate's phone call with her mother didn't make the movie either. It was a longish scene and even if it showed an important family relationship, we could do without it just as fine. It appears to me that many screenwriters are doing away with punctuation and it doesn't help the read. Sheridan is generous with commas and I love it because it helps my brain break down the sentences and therefore I understand them faster. I picked up on this description, Macy's body tenses and deflates at the same time, which is physically impossible. Perhaps it suggests that things are moving faster than they actually do and that's always a great thing for any screenplay. While watching movies, screenwriters often wonder, would that be in the script? Well, now we know for sure that Matt's flip-flops were not. By the way, we also learned that here in Australia we call flip-flops tongs and a barbie is a barbecue. And barbie tongs cost $13. Sheridan is happy to break with convention if it suits him, and why shouldn't he? Slug lines have full stops, and the name of Manuel Diaz is introduced before we see the character, and I already mentioned the parentheticals. Produced screenwriters get away with this, and Sheridan is in many ways exceptional. But think twice before you break with convention, or choose your battles. Some of the tricks used here may serve you quite well. The script certainly pushes the boundaries of engagement with the main character, and someone must have realized along the way that this went a little too far. It could have been Sheridan himself, the producers, or director Denis Villeneuve, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that you cannot move away from your main character repeatedly without getting punished at the box office. And so all scenes with Alejandro had to go until we finally meet with him through Kate's POV. If you're studying Christopher Nolan, and we do that in Immersion Core, the Immersion Script course, you may notice how he reduces his page count. Sheridan does something similar here. When my Sicario copy drifted out of sync with the original, I discovered that the format settings for slug lines were tampered with. 
standardly you have a two line space before a new slug line, but Sheridan reduced that to one and a half in order to shave a few pages off the total page count. This is relatively innocent, but reducing white space makes it less easy on the eye. Another space saving trick from Sheridan I certainly don't recommend is to embed parentheticals right into the dialogue. Yes, you will save lines, but many readers will hate it because it breaks convention. And I've seen other writers do it. Personally, I don't mind all that much. But if you're a novice, tread carefully. If you want a handy overview of these points, just check the notes below this video. You can download it for free. And if you sign up for Immersion, you get all the lists I create here. But if you're not doing this actual work yourself, you're missing out. That's how you truly improve. If you lack time, consider Immersion Script. You won't need to look up any scripts and you'll learn in the same way from dozens of leading screenwriters. You can finish the entire course in a few weeks. A snippet from Sicario is also in there somewhere as a transcription exercise. If you're interested in the course, now is the time. With the code SHERIDAN50, you only pay half. The link is below. If you enjoyed this video, support me by subscribing and clicking the bell so you know when there's more. Today was a short video, but I'm quite happy with what I learned. Tomorrow will feel like a billionaire when we spend most of our time on board of a private jet. And there will be some very important deleted scenes, further proving our point about POV. I hope you'll join us again. Happy watching. Happy writing. Cheers.